What's up guys, it's day two of the NoFap journey. It's day two of the new year. And I came across this really interesting book today. It's called Behold, A Pale Horse. And I don't know much about the history of this book, but I remember seeing a while back that it was banned, I believe, from from a few different countries. And I was sort of startled to stumble upon it in my library. So I just picked it up. I had no idea what it's about. And I feel kind of like, like I don't know if in some of your guys' countries this book is actually allowed in the homes or in the libraries. But this guy, William Cooper, was in the naval, uh, in the Navy, and I guess he got a hold of a bunch of top secret transcripts. And like, you, he, there's stuff with Area 51 here. You can see here. Let me let me see if I can show you. Like. Like this kind of stuff. I really don't know where to start. So I just started at the beginning. And I wanted to share something. There's there's a little UFO. UFO sighting picture right there. So pretty cool. I don't know. I don't know what it's all about. But this part really stood out to me. And he's talking about this chapter is actually called Top Secret Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Um, the Illuminati's declaration of war upon the people of America. Now, you can believe in the Illuminati or not, but I think that this sort of gives us some insight into maybe what we take, not for granted, but maybe how civilization has blinded us and put us in this place with our heads. I tell you what, I feel stuck in my head. A lot of times like like it's hard to it's hard to get a grip on my head it's um, like I have good days where life is a lot of fun there's a lot of happiness there's an underlying bit of happiness there but then I also have days where there's like a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of almost gaps in my memory where I don't really remember too much of the day. It was just sort of a blur. And when I go to bed, it, I don't really dream as much. So there's not like that peace. There's not that, and I think that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that peace. I want to be happy just like you guys. Oh, well, And life is good. I'm not down. I'm just saying I want to actually become aware of it. I want to unplug myself if I can if I can become aware of maybe something that is ensnaring me and trapping me where I'm at mentally because I want, I want to push past those barriers. So this is a descriptive introduction of the silent weapon that it's talking about. I'm going to read you this part. Everything that, has, everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only in its own manner of junctioning. It's... Sh- it shoot, shoots situations instead of bullets, propelled by data processing instead of a chemical reaction explosion, originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder, from a computer instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer instead of a marksman, under the orders of a banking magnet instead of a military general. It makes no obvious explosive noises, causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anybody's daily social life. Yet it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with daily social life, i.e. unmistakably to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but because of the technical nature of the silent weapon, they cannot express their feeling in a rational way or handle the problem with intelligence. Therefore, they do not know how to cry for help and do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts, adapts to its presence, and learns to tolerate 
its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, physiological via economic, becomes too great and they crack up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. So, the silent weapon. What is the silent weapon? Well, the silent weapon we were just reading about. I remember when I was about 15, I got my first cell phone. And it was a flip, so I didn't really have access to internet. I started to text message, and I started to be able to call my friends. And I remember how awesome of a device that was just to allow me to do those things. About two years ago, I actually, when I first started making YouTube videos, I would record on a on like my tablet, but I didn't have Wi-Fi. And then I got a phone, which I'm recording on now, that gives me access to the internet. And my God, like how things have changed, dude. Like, man, having access to just watch anything all the time. This is a really good point I was thinking about. When I go to the movies, I think even if it's a pretty shitty movie, I'm still like blown away by just being at the movies. But there's a lot of people who watch movies all the time. And so like, it's almost, here's what I think it is. I think that you can watch movies, you can read books, you can play video games, and you can do those things to escape or to numb. Like it's this escapism from real life. But when I read or when I decide to watch something, I'm projecting my myself onto that character. Like if you read Harry Potter, you're like projecting yourself onto Harry. That young boy going through the school, the academy. Quoth, in the name of the wind, many of you have read that. You're Ready Player One, that new movie coming out. Like you're projecting onto that and and beginning to go throughout these different scenarios in life, you're figure, you're trying to make sense of your own life through the story of someone else, and that's really cool. But I think with the the sheer amount that we have, the abundance of entertainment, social media, that story it becomes watered down, and it, it more becomes just like something in the background, it's background noise for you to escape, and then you just become like a drone. And so there's an even less. Intent, listen to this part. This is pretty wild. Um, let me let me find this page. I, here it is. It's marked it right here. All right. So this is um, a table of strategies to divert the public. This is achieved by disengaging their minds, sabotaging their mental activities. Providing a low-quality program of public education in mathematics, logic, systems design, and economics. And discouraging technical creativity. Number two, engaging their emotions. Increasing their self-indulgence and their indulgence in emotional and physical acti activities by A. Unrelenting emotional affrontations and attacks, mental and emotional rape, by way of cons constant barrage of sex violence and wars in the media, especially the TV and the newspapers. And B, giving them what they desire in excess, junk food for thought, and depriving them of what they really need. Number three, rewriting history and law and subjecting the public to the deviant creation, thus being able to shift their thinking from personal needs to highly fabricated outside priorities. These preclude their interest in and discovery, discovery of the silent weapons of social automation technology. The general rule is that there is profit in confusion. The more confusion, the more profit. Therefore, the best approach is to create problems and then offer the solutions. Um, and I'll finish it up with this last paragraph. Diversion summary. Media. Keep the adult public attention diverted away from the real social issues and captivated by matters of no real importance. Schools. 
Keep the young public ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law, and real history. Entertainment. Keep the public entertainment below a sixth grade level. Work. Keep the public busy, 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 with no time to think, back on the farm with the other animals. And so, again, this is, behold, a pale horse. And, you know, just as I was reading this, this past hour here at the library, I'm just thinking about unplugging, and if you, uh, being conscious. I don't know if there's actually one group. I'm sure I'll hear it from you guys in the comments, what you believe and what's real, what's not. Believe in God. God's the way, right? Whatever you believe in. But I think we should take a look at our lives and see maybe how we're just getting so caught up with, like, especially our phones. The technology has got to be a silent weapon in and of itself. Like, if you could just begin to cut down this year, do more, do less, do more being in nature, do more spending time with family and friends and, and having that oxytocin release instead of being on your phone. I was thinking if you want to be happy, which all of us want to be happy, you know that happiness isn't found on your phone. Like that's one place you're not going to find happiness. Maybe you'll hear some good stuff and you'll learn some good stuff, but the majority of the time spent on our phone, the, the 80% of the time spent on our phone is not in that direction. It's not to learn. It's usually a lot of mindless games and music and videos. So if you want to become a rock solid man and you want to have that fire and just feel the direction in your life grow and blossom, I, th I think we've got to unplug. So day two, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you soon. Peace.